Wonderful. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Run Pain Freeze Injury Analysis. Today, we're going over the injury of plantar fasciitis. So, the big question is this. How can runners like you, who aren't professional athletes or paid sponsored runners, fix, heal, and correct lingering run injuries so you can enjoy your passion for running for the rest of your life? That is the question. And on RunPainFreePodcast.com, your host, Jessica Marie Rose Leggio, gives you the answers. Listen, an oldie but goodie, because it still stays present. (laughs) So hopefully you get some information on this. Take some notes. about to go over some stuff. I got some graphics to show you, so I hope that you're cool with real body pictures. Uh, So let's get into it. Plantar fasciitis, foot pain, heel pain, stabbing foot pain and heel pain. The first thing I want you to know is it has nothing to do with your feet. Zero. Absolutely nothing to do with your feet. So... What we're first gonna go over is how your body moves. So walking and running is the same mechanic. And I was very disappointed when I saw someone online who's a professional say that that's not the case because it actually is the case. Uh, The only difference is running has velocity and it absorbs the movement. Uh, Running is actually harder on the body than running in terms of that, but it is the same movement. Which is why when a runner, specifically a distance runner, gets injured, life also sucks because it's the same movement. Not the case when you're doing a different sport like soccer, basketball, football. You kind of contend, you can tend to do other stuff like grocery shop without a problem. Not so when it comes to running. So plantar fasciitis is stabbing foot pain at the heel specifically. Most times that you really know you absolutely have it is when you get out of bed in the morning, you go put your feet down and you act you it's stabbing pain. Let's start there. When your foot it, when you're standing up, that's ankle flexion. When you're just standing up, your ankle is flexed. And so when your ankle is flexed, that's your calf is extending, your your Achilles is extending, your hamstring is extending, your knee is extending. So when that's happening, um On the opposite side, when you go into your toe, that's ankle extension. The front of your ankle is extending. Now your calf is firing. Your Achilles is firing. You could also be firing your hamstring if you come up and and bend your knee in the toe. So anything that's up is going to be extending the ankle. Dropping it is going to be flexing the ankle. The reason why plantar fasciitis is so blaring at the bottom of the foot is actually due to the function or lack thereof in your hip and spine and how they're talking to the rest of your body, specifically your leg and your foot. So I've done this several times, but I'm doing it a little bit differently and just updating it just to give you more visuals and more understanding. So What you see on the visual, that is an actual body that is the ITT, that's iliotibial tract. And the reason I put this one up is because I'm tired of people not understanding that there is really no band of fascia. It is a tract in the fascia system. And it is in the superficial layer of fascia system because there's several layers of fascia. And I want you to see I've shown other visuals in my courses in the Run Pain Free Academy. Uh, And so, but this is really, this actually shows, this is the full fascia on the leg and it's a tract and that's coming down. That's the knee, that's the hump of the knee. And then it just joins other tissue. There's no beginning, there's no end. It's not a band, it's not just stopping. Like that's not how this works. And so that's why the IT band is really the iliotibial IT tract, and it comes all the way up, crossing over the glute, coming to the other side, opposite shoulder. Literally dictates the body operating right to left, literally. So that's why when someone's talking about your IT band being a problem, it for, for, for me, it immediately tells me 
especially if it's a professional quote unquote professional saying it, it tells me their education level off the bat. I don't need to have any more of a conversation with it, but also so many people, so many runners actually say they have IT bend syndrome. The reason I'm bringing that up as a by, because it's a byproduct to plantar fasciitis. A lot of people who have plantar fasciitis, you already missed or been told you have runner's knee, shin splints, posterior shin splints, anterior tibialis, uh, tendonitis, tendonitis of your foot, uh, or you have IT band syndrome. And I think I said that already, but just to, just to bookend it. And all of that is all just indicators that something is awry in your body and your function is off, and so you have to fix it. But unless you actually know sports biomechanics and unless you actually know functionality and, and movement patterns and functional movement, you're not gonna know how to do that because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a expertise. It's an expertise. That's what it is. So it's a specialty. So I want you to understand that's what it looks like. So get that in your visual, get that in your brain so you understand. This is a visual that I've given many, many times and it was specifically to show how the IT joins into other fascia. So this is part of the body is shaved, meaning where that red is, this is the dead body exhibit, where that red is, they shaved off the fascia so you could see part muscle, red is muscle, but there's fascia on top of muscle on, on your body sitting there right now. Your body doesn't look like this underneath. There's fascia all over it and inside of it. There's three different layers of fascia. You have superficial, which is what we just saw. This guy right here, superficial. Then you have um, deep fascia, which is around your blood vessels, inside your muscles, around your joints, encasing everything. And then you have visceral fascia, which is actually the skin of organs, literally in the cavity, the abdominal cavity. It encases all the organs in their setting. No one should be touching that fascia, in my professional opinion. We deal with one and two, and this is how we get things to move and get things to release and tell us why they're doing that. It gives us information. It's a very big sensory system. Your knee knows that your back is jacked up light years before you do. So if you happen to have foot pain, thank it, because you don't want to feel where it's actually coming from. It's giving you a red flag, okay? So what happens though is this happens. Someone has plantar fasciitis, they have foot pain. This is what they wind up getting, all the tape. But why I chose this picture, because I have a plethora to choose from. <laughs> why I chose this picture is because what do you think all this tape is trying to mimic? that that's what it's doing and what's also here we go with the lane remember i'm coming on the miseducation of this okay so i'm also coming from a different angle here with this injury analysis the people who would say you have plantar fasciitis something's wrong with your foot why are we doing all this tape all over the place then the same people would say don't foam roll don't foam roll they sit there but but they're using tape to mimic the actual fascia system pulling it off of joints or attempting to. The way that the tape is properly put on is when they pull it off the joint. They're pulling, they're pulling the strain of the fascia off the joint. And so it gives you the illusion that the joint doesn't have any strain on it. So you go ahead and you run your 26.2. You take that tape off and your whole world lights up. <laughs> Not in a good way. So that's why I use this picture because this is like, again, the layers of the miseducation of runners who think, yeah, we should use this. Nah, how about you fix that? It's fixable. It's actually fixable. So there's your second one. Number one, it's not in your feet. Got nothing to do with your feet. And number two, it's actually fixable. Nobody should have plantar fasciitis for their whole life, ever. I, it, when I hear somebody who's not gonna run a race because of shin splints or plantar fasciitis, I'm like, are you kidding me? You can't be serious. It's not even an injury. It's not even an injury. I'm sure I just got all the eye rolls and I love it. It's not an injury. It's result of an injury, okay? So now we're gonna get into where it's coming from. So these are your actual hip flexors. These are your actual hip flexors your psoas and your sartorius. So I used this picture where it actually shows where there will be a strain because later on, I'm gonna go over the difference of what a strain, a tear, fracture, and all that stuff is. So that's why I use this just to give you like 
a little little indicator of what's coming up next. Uh, but this, these are your actual hip flexors. And here's the funny part. The sartorius doesn't even touch your hip, but it's your second hip flexor. Okay. Okay. So up top, there you go. The two guys coming down on the side of your spine. That's your psoas. That's your main hip flexor. You can't walk, run, sit or stand or sleep with a psoas problem. It's not going to happen. It's going to suck all of it. And then the satorius comes from the iliac crest. As you can see, you see the two hip bones. I'm going to show you on my little anatomy guys too in a second, but those two hip bones, it's above it. It's on your waist where it says strain that thing that looks like a little disc. That's your iliac crest. You all put your hands on your hips, but it's actually your iliac crest. Here goes another miseducation understanding. If you think your hip is where that says strain and you have pain there and you Google hip pain, you're getting information for all the way down low, not up there. It's not the same thing. So now you're doing things from Google. You're doing things from a, even a doctor. You're saying I have hip pain and point here. You're doing things that have nothing to do with that because it's going to give you information about your actual hip. That's not your hip. Okay. So the psoas comes down on both sides of the spine, inserts inside the hip joint. And the sartorius goes from the waist across all of the quads. It's the most superficial and longest muscle in the body all the way down to underneath inside your shin. So guess what happens when the psoas doesn't move well? Well, the, it tells the sartorius whether it's going to move or not either. So that guy gets jacked up too. And where is the insertion? On the shin. Here we go, shin splints. I did that in the shin splints one already. So look at that one. That's in the social media ruin running. Check that one out because I did a whole update on shin splints. This is the start of it. When you let this go, you wind up with, uh, you wind up with plantar fasciitis. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So if the shin is being pulled on, then the knee is going to be getting pulled on too, because it's grazing the knee. It's not on the knee. It's grazing it. But guess what comes in immediately? That. This system senses, oh, your sartorius is pulling on the inside of the kneecap. Lock up, IT. Lock her up because she can't, we can't, we can't move. The sartorius, the sartorius can't extend. It can't externally hip rotate. It can't flex at the hip. Where are you going if you can't extend at your hip, flex at your hip, or externally rotate? Nowhere. It's natural function for your foot to turn off, to come out and turn out. It's a normal function. It's normal. So if you can't do that, it's dysfunction. Dysfunction leads to injuries. That's what that is. But it continues and it pulls and it pulls. But then you're told, hey, go get, go get a stability sneaker because you need more stability. That's why you're pounding. You should go get stability sneakers. Well, now you put a stability sneaker in and you locked all of that dysfunction in place. Here we go. Now, let's go into my phone, shall we? Let's go into my Let's go into my little guy app because I'm going to explain to you the lower leg muscles and how these all come into play to this. So first things first, I'm going to turn this sideways. Okay. This is, oh wait, I can, I can do, no, I'll do this one first. Extensor digitum longus. Okay. So if you look at the top, you see the toes. You see them, see him lifting his toes. This muscles, look at the muscle. It comes from right underneath the knee all the way down the front of the ankle out to all four toes, toes number two, three, four, and five. Okay, not the big toe. This muscle's job is to flex the toes. You see it? Flex. It's also job to flex the ankle. That's ankle flexion. Ankle flexion means the calf is extending. The Achilles is extending. You have two calf muscles, by the way. You'll see them. It's not just one calf, it's two of them. So though that muscle is doing that, okay? Now, the other guy, anterior tibialis. Anterior tibialis. And I believe the medical community has actually changed <laughs> um, uh, one, of the, one of the nerves down here. The peroneal nerve. Now they're calling it the tibial nerve, I believe. Um, that, I know it's recent as we have a ton of 
doctors on our roster and we've been talking about it lately. So I don't think it's out. I don't think it's out there, but I know it's being talked about, but I don't want to misspeak. So it's just something I'm dropping a seed of. Anyways, uh, this is your anterior tibialis. Again, flex the foot and inverts the foot. So can you, okay, okay, it's coming up, perfect. So what is that action? Ankle roll, ankle roll. What else are you told? You need a stability sneaker so you don't roll your ankle. You ready for the truth? If you're in a stability sneaker and your ankle rolls, you're definitely gonna sprain your ankle. But if you're in a sneaker that actually allows your foot to move, you don't roll your ankle or sprain it. it doesn't become anything. Your body can go with it. But the stability sneaker disallows ankle mobility. So you lose the mobility to go with it. Listen, okay. Now let's go to the calf muscles. First, I wanna show you, do you see this muscle? Now this muscle, it goes, I'm gonna show you on the other guy also. But this muscle, this is your soleus. It's a calf muscle. Its only job is to point your foot. That is its only job. See, one. One job, you only have one job. That's what it's supposed to do. This is your gastrocnemius. Also points the foot. This second job of this guy is to actually flex at the knee. So that's what that's supposed to do. Now, if you are in a sneaker, that's a stability sneaker, you're automatically put into your toes. So you're automatically firing your calf because the minute you put pressure into your toes on the ball of your foot, you fire your calf. You can to do it right now. I encourage everybody to do what I'm saying as I'm saying it in any of my live streams and any of my podcasts. Get up and do it. Test it. Test it yourself because I am a firm believer that feeling is believing. I could talk to him blue in the face. Go do it. Tell me about it. Comment about it. Write in. Send in, DM me, something. I love to hear it. Uh, stand up and just put weight in the ball of your feet. Your calves are gonna fire. You don't even have to press your heel off the ground. Just put weight in the ball. Just transfer your weight forward to your toes. Your calves are gonna fire. So that's all it takes. So if you are now, now we have the lift, my Lord, the lift of the sneakers, the back heel, is now lifting your heel up and forcing your foot downward. Now you actually have pressure in the top, in the, in the ball of your foot. You are absolutely firing your calf. So now you're training your body to do that the entire run. It is 2.2 pounds of pressure per step on the run. So you are building muscle in that the entire time you're running. So hours a day, and here we go, long run season, you're doing 15 miles, 18 miles. If you're not in run pain free, you're doing ridiculous stuff like running 22 miles, which no one should be doing. You're doing all of this instability sneakers that is conditioning your calf to fire its off, okay? That's what it's doing. So when you take off your sneaker and you go to drop your heel, into ankle flexion, you scream. It screams, everybody screams because it can't do it because you've trained it to not do it and you've locked it in to not do it and now you built muscle to keep it there. Nobody talks about the muscle. I'm a strength coach. That's what we have to do here. We have to get your body undoing the muscle you built like this, get it functional and then build it back properly. Yeah, it's called functional. It's called sports specific training. It's called know how to train a body. Okay. So if you don't know any of this, you just go into a sneaker and think that the, it's never the sneaker. You still think it's you, which is honestly kind of sad that people really believe that their bodies are in that much bad of shape and it's, it's nothing. The sneaker could never be it. Like take them off. Just take them off for a second. There's not one person who's come to run pain-free in a stability sneaker that I have taken out of the stability sneaker and put into our suggested and approved sneakers. And they're not like, oh my God, I've, I've never like felt my feet move like that. No, you ain't lying. You're not lying. Let's go in. So now this is my other guy. I'm gonna show you how deep the psoas is. That's how deep it is. It's the deepest muscle in the body. Here, I'll light it up for you. It's the deepest muscle in the body. It, 
attaches the entire lumbar. It goes all the way up into your diaphragm right underneath it. It's at L1, T12. So it is your your T-spine, your shoulder blades, shoulder blade knots, all that are not away from this guy. He's very much involved in that. And it attaches your upper body to your lower body. If you don't have a psoas, you have no muscular connection, upper body to lower body. Straight up. There's other muscles, but this one literally connects the two. Uh, so there you go. That's inside your hip. That is your hip joint. That's your hip joint. So this guy is dictating the next guy. So let's pull him out. You can still see, you still see him? You still see it lit up? Good, perfect. And now this is your, now I wanna show you. Hold on, let me fade. Let me fade others. Look at it. You see it? That's why you think you have a muscle called the hip flexor. Because you will point to that spot where the two of them are crossing. You see that muscle that's just laying right over it? Right here. Doop. That's the satorius. You all think you have a hip flexor muscle right there. And that's inaccurate. That's miseducation. There's no such thing. There is no such thing as a hip flexor. They are comprised of several muscles. And there is no such thing as a groin. It is representative of a space on your body, an area on your body, not a muscle. Your psoas is what the actual, quote, groin would be, is the psoas, okay? I hope I'm ringing off some bells in your brain and connecting some dots for you. So these two guys cross right there. But let's come all the way down to where this sucker is. Ooh, look at it. Here he goes, right on your kneecap. Let's draw a line. Let's turn. Let's see where that yellow is. Let's fade. Let's go right around to the other side. Now, I just showed you the truth, a human body, so this is inaccurate. However, what it does show is where the IT band starts to attach to other tissue. Look at it. It is literally right across from where the sartorius is inserting on the inside of the shin. Same thing. This really is more closer to the fibula, which is, that's still the tibia, so the fibula under is underneath this guy. Yeah, so you can't hardly see it. It's the little bone that juts out outside of your knee, outside of your calf. So here is the way I'm, I walked you down from top to bottom where I've walked you up before from the bottom to the top for when it comes to plantar fasciitis. I'm talking about top to bottom because I want you to understand where everything's coming down to, okay? And so this is what happens. When this guy here, let's go back now. Let's turn around sideways. Now, this foot, this is lifting the foot. This is pointing the foot. Both of these muscles are basically pistons. One's going up, one's going down. So what's covering them? What's covering them? All the fascia I already showed you. The whole fascia is just covering it. So if you take your hands right now and put it underneath the bone that's protruding out outside of your high, high calf, there's a bone right there. Put your fingers there. Put your finger right underneath the bone. Point and flex your foot. You're going to feel a lot of muscle movement. That's push off. Guess what you don't have if your foot is locked? Push off. Guess what senses a lack of mobility when you have a foot locked and you have no push off? Your IT band. What is the IT band? A sensory system of fascia. It's a part of an, a very, very intelligent system in the body. It senses, hey, she doesn't have any ankle mobility. She's not extending her, her ankle at all. She's just in flexion. This calf is about to bust because it's completely locked and tight. So let's lock her knee up so she actually stops running. Let's give her some pain. Oh, she didn't listen? Well, the sartorius is pulling on the inside of the shin and it's disallowing anything from working in the lower leg. Both calves, uh, the, the, the ankle function, the foot function, everything is gone. There's no muscle happening on the bottom of the foot. Let's lock everything up now so they actually stop. And now you have screaming pain all in your lower leg and everything's gonna pull on the base of your heel. Why? Because look where that green thing inserts. Do you see it? Do you see it? Look at this. That's why. It inserts into your heel. 
So if that whole thing is firing, pick up a weight right now and hold it up with your bicep. Just hold it there. Do it for five miles. Do it for 10. Oh my goodness, you're a distance runner. Do it for an entire marathon. Tell me how you feel when you take your arm down. You can't do it. You can't do it. You can't extend your el- you can't extend your elbow. You can't extend your bicep. It's the exact same thing happening to your calf. Your calves are like rocks. They're rock hard because you have trained your body to never extend your ankle. You've built muscle to never extend your ankle. Your body thinks it's supposed to do that because it's a smart, intelligent system, and you're giving it guidance. So it's like, hey, everybody, the foot's locked up. She don't want the foot to move. She don't want us to ever point or to ever flex our foot. She wants us to stay in flexion. Let's build like this. Voila! Now you went, you already had shin splints along that line. You already got shin splints because the tutorial pulls on the shin first. You bypass that. You think that's normal because you ate that because runners told you that that was normal and you should always have shin splints when you're running. Then you had calf pain. They told you to let that go. Probably put a sleeve on for that one. Yep. And then that was normal too because everybody in the group said that it was normal. And then you started getting foot pain and they were like, oh, you probably have plantar fasciitis. Put some, get, step on an ice, a, an ice bottle. Because you need to roll the bottom of your foot. What does ice do? Freeze. If you don't have, what does movement do? Movement creates blood flow. So if you're not moving, you don't have blood flow. Why would you freeze something you already don't have blood flow for? When you do, you freeze the injury. Yeah, you do. Don't do that. That's into another segment. Listen to me later on another part where I'm talking about the hogwash, the top 10 things of hogwash of plantar fasciitis that runners need to know, okay? So this is what happens. So now you have plantar fasciitis, but let's go further. It hurts too much for you to drop your heel. So now you start band-aiding it. You wear wedges to work. If you're a, a guy, Your work shoes might feel better because a lot of them have a little bit of a heel, just a little bit of a heel. Or nowadays it's casual, so you can actually wear your stability sneaker to work. So now you're just really keeping it like that. Then on top of it, when you go home, when you go to sleep, if you go to sleep in a bed and your covers, your sheet is tucked in and you have a blanket on top, your sheet, your, your, your actual bedding is making your feet point. But you were told that in your sleep, This was always funny to me. You were told in your sleep that you are naturally pointing your toe while you're sleeping. Not that the weight of the blankets are actually pointing your toe because you're a back sleeper. Or that when you flip onto your stomach, you're still pointing your feet because now your feet are against the mattress. You're never ever flexing your foot. And then you get up in the morning and want to know why your foot's screaming. Because you were in position to point it all night. You didn't just sit there and point. You're not a ballet dancer. You're not pointing your feet in your sleep. Ballet dancers don't even do that. And here's that. Let me. That just rang in my brain. Guess who doesn't have plantar fasciitis? Dancers. <laughs> the one athletic thing that is literally how completely to do with their feet. Everything that a dancer does, a ballerina, it's all feet. Tapping, all feet. Every dance is all feet. Ballerina is just the top notch. But everything, and the dancers are not getting plantar fasciitis. Now, a hardcore tapper, which we would call hoofer in the industry. I'm probably dating myself by saying that. But they would get heel spurs because they're slamming their foot into the tap, into ground. That's something they would get. But never, never, never are they getting a plantar fasciitis. Get out of town. So this is also another falsehood. It has nothing to do with your feet. Because if it did, every dancer would have plantar fasciitis. Specifically the ones that are on point. <laughs> they're not on the balls of their feet. They're literally on their toe. Go Google a point dancer. Go Google it. They're literally on their big toe for hours. And they do an hour and a half a bar before they even take the stage. And the runner's going to tell me that their foot's a problem. Get out of here. Please get out of here. A professional is going to tell me it's a foot problem. Also, get out of here. Also. Okay? No, it's not. It's absolutely not. You have developed into a system where your body was already in compromise. Now, why that is, go to runpainfreenow.com and fill out a form to apply for a consult, and I'll figure it out for you. But 
Whatever you, there's a reason in your body that your body operates in a way that pulled on your psoas, pulled on your sartorius, disallowed function, the IT band system and the fascia system locked you up, disallowed movement. You brought yourself to a sneaker store, got instability of sneakers if you weren't already doing that in the first place, which already added to it. Then it added to it. You locked up your mobility and around and around and worse and worse you got. That is how you got plantar fasciitis. And this is also why when you come to runpainfreenow.com and get your consult and sign on to the program, you actually are running pain-free for plantar fasciitis quite quickly. Quite quickly. Because it has nothing to do with your feet. It has nothing to do with your feet. So I'm actually going to move on now. And I'm going to show you what I mean by this. So this is actual footage of me in the New York City Marathon. That cop came over to me. He knows where we stand. And uh, they come over and get me for people that are coming up that they see that I don't see that are in pain. And so this guy came up. And he actually had plantar fasciitis. I don't know him, never worked with him. And I went over to him and he had calf sleeves on. And I specifically chose this footage because I want to show you what I do to people with calf sleeves on. I rip them right off. He was holding onto the porta potties for dear life. This is mile 22. He could not go any further. He had ran the whole race like that. When I pulled off the sock, heat packets fell out. So he was actually trying to generate more blood flow by shoving heat packets into the sock and then put the sock up. Well, what happened was uh, the calf sleeve disallowed any, any blood flow anywhere outside of the sock. It locks at the ends. Wherever the elastic band is, that's where it locks. That's why today you see a lot of people wearing full leg, full like a lot of the basketball players, they're wearing full leg compression um, leggings. Because it locks off. So someone got smart somewhere, but you still shouldn't be wearing it anyways. Uh, so he did that. So he stopped the blood flow in the calf itself. It never got to his foot, never got to his knee, let alone the rest of his body. And then he put a heat pack in there. So he doubled down on it. So his calves felt like they were going to explode. It's literally what he was saying. That's when the cop came to get me. So I took them down and I stuck it. So I actually got the blood to get it out of his legs. After this... I had to actually, I walked with him and I pumped the blood out of his legs to get it into the rest of his legs and into his heart, essentially, because it was not getting there efficiently. Not for nothing. People think these sleeves are jokes. This is not jokes here. Distance running is no joke. It's on NFL, National Football League, players bucket lists for a reason. I bring that up because the NFL, the National Football League, American football is the highest injury death sport in the world. Okay? So... They have it on a bucket list to run a marathon. People think this stuff is easy. It's not easy. So this is no joke. You do not want to run with a sleeve on. I will get to that again in the hogwash, the top, the 10 hogwash things I'm going to talk about later. But I literally, if you see, what, look at me through the crowd. You can see me walking with him. I'm pump. I'm, I'm walking. I walked with him about three or four blocks, just getting him to pump his legs and talking to him because he was in so much pain, but he was starting to get a little delirious because he wasn't getting sufficient blood flow to the rest of his body. And he did finish all he knew that I was run pain free. He didn't remember my name. And he tweeted me and said, thank you, run pain free. I would have never finished without you. I don't know your name, but thank you so much. And I was just happy to hear that he finished <laughs> and that he was healthy, but this is what is happening. So when we are doing what people are telling us to do online without any background, without checking it, without understanding where it's coming from, you really do hurt yourself. I understand why he did this. It's not your fault. It's not his fault. It's the community's fault because someone heard something and had a really loud mouth about it and it just spreads like wildfire. And unfortunately today, that's just the majority. The majority of people out here who are talking are the ones that don't have any education. They're the ones lacking the education. Us experts are the most quiet online. And I, now that I put that in your brain, you're going to notice it more. <laughs> Those who actually know what they're doing really aren't on there dip -dip 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 all day long. They're not doing that. You know, I don't even really comment on things anymore because I'm not going to devalue my expertise and my knowledge and education and go back and forth with someone who does this for fun. No offense. I'm just saying you wouldn't do that with your job. So I'm not going to do it with mine. So 
that's why I, I, I lead here in our podcast, in the injury analysis, in our live streams where I can educate and put education out there that you all are going to be able to search and find and get actual help. Plantar fasciitis has nothing to do with your feet. It has everything to do with how your body is moving way up top. It's rooted in years and years and years prior. And all it really is that you're feeling right now is tight calves. And the minute you get your calves released, the minute you're going to actually start getting foot function. Your arch and your foot need each other. If you lock up your foot, your calf can't do anything. If you don't let your calf move, your foot can't do anything. So they need each other. And if you freeze it with ice, you can kiss, you can kiss any mobility out the window. You can kiss any relief out the window because all it's doing is freezing what already doesn't have blood flow. The Achilles tendon has the least amount of blood supply out of all tendons in the body. And it is my professional opinion that it needs the most because it's your actual foot. You're never not using your feet. You're always using your feet. So it needs even more. So the level of tissue and fascia in that lower leg is so much that you have to go really hard at it to get it moving, get it juicy, and get your mobility back around your ankle and your foot and relieve your foot of that pressure so it can actually build and function properly. I always say, the strength of a runner and the power of a runner is really lost in their feet because you guys all stifle it. You put it in stability sneakers, never let you move. You need to free your feet. You need to free your feet. Go to runpainfreenow.com and apply for a consult with me if you have plantar fasciitis. Why? Because it's talking about a much bigger problem up top that you know nothing about and you're fussing with your feet and it's a waste of your time. So come on over and apply for a consult and we'll get to the bottom of it. We'll figure it out. I hope this new and different angle of plantar fasciitis injury analysis gave you some insight. If you have any questions, again, reach out to us. And uh, I'll see you on the hogwash side. See ya. And that's the finish line for today's episode. You're not just a runner. You're the key to your healing. Learn how to run stronger after injury at runpainfreenow.com. Until next time. <laughs>